Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for your daily dose of the RARS, where I talk about the very stupid stuff going on in the world of technology so I can fund SiliconDojo.com. Free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. We're going to be having a class on AI computer vision using something called Moondream coming up next week. We have another class coming up on pushing AI to the edge using Raspberry Pis in the beginning of January. If you're interested, take a look at SiliconDojo.com to see what our schedule is. If you want to support, free technology education there is a donor box link down below and i've got good news for you i've got good news for you imagine this metaphor right so you're on the titanic the titanic is sinking and somebody comes up to you screaming good news good news the water is two degrees warmer than we thought it was so so yeah look your life, your life has gotten so much better. You're gonna, you're going to go into water that's like 36 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 34 degrees Fahrenheit. So, you know, it's better. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> I feel like, I don't know, I feel like that kind of typifies l late stage 2025. And that's probably where we're going to be going into 2026. Where you just sit, you just sit there and you're like, well, yeah, it's, it's better. Egg, eggs only cost, you know, a car payment now. They no longer cost as much as a mortgage payment. I mean, there's, there's something to be said. Anyways, I think this is kind of an interesting story to talk about how the insanity going on with the great AI fraud, uh, not only, not only is destroying the foundations of society, not only is eating the rest of the technology industry, but it actually seems to be eating the AI industry itself. Uh, and it'll be curious to see how this works out in a capitalistic system. Like what's kind of interesting here is think about a capitalistic system and what you're trying to build and what people like Sam Altman are trying to build require just so many components, so many things come together to create just one widget. Like, so this, this is a Jetson Nano. Hey, look, I'm a real technology professional, I swear. Uh, we're going to be in a class on this on Silicon Dojo uh, coming up. I don't know, in the next little while. Anyways, this is NVIDIA's, NVIDIA's like Raspberry Pi version, but it has a real GPU on here, uh, basically the, is the idea. But anyways, you, you look at this thing, right? And you think about, okay, Sam Altman needs to buy, let, let's, let's just say he needs to buy, you know, I don't know, 10 million of these things. Well, the reality is it's, he doesn't really need to buy 10 million of these things. Uh, he needs to buy 10 million fans and 10 million connectors and 10 million circuits of all different types and 10 million GPI opens and 10 million motherboards. All of those things come together to, to create this widget. But then it's not simply 10 million fans. If you look at this, well, this fan, I got a fan in here. And so somebody creates the fan itself and then somebody creates the motor. And then this is a heat sink. Somebody else probably creates the heat sink and somebody else all packages and eh, Nexperia packages this together to come up as a cooling unit. And then that gets sold. But think about all of the components that have to come together, even for something like this. This is like a $260 little computer. And there's a lot, there is a lot that goes into this little widget and now imagine now imagine 1.4 trillion dollars and buying lots of these right and so the curious thing is in a capitalist system is what is worth more right is this worth more than that is that worth more than the other thing and what happens when all of these uh, these technology hardware vendors start chasing after uh, the biggest pots of money and how how is that going to skew things in our industry to be not just damaging to us, right? It's screwing us. It's already screwing us. But also, is it going to start being damaging to the AI industry itself? Like, like the, mo the most valuable thing is to, to manufacture this stuff. Right? And so everybody's buying this stuff. But in order to have a server, you need this, and you need this, and you need this, and you need... So what if, what if, what if they focus on building this stuff but they don't focus on building this stuff over here. And now all of a sudden you have, you have like nine, you have nine of the 10 components you need to build out your data center. You know what that means? You don't have a data center. It's much like a degree, right? You can have, you can have 117 credit hours in a, uh, in a uh, college program here in the United States. And that's still not a bachelor's degree. A bachelor's degree is 120 credit hours. You miss your bachelor's degree by one class 
And uh, <clears throat> you're not supposed to put that you have a degree on your resume, right? Well, the same thing is true with the data center, right? You have all of this, you have millions and millions of parts coming in. You have thousands of people doing work. You've done all of this. And then you can't get that one component. Like imagine, imagine there was a vendor in the Netherlands <laughs> that produced parts, produced wafers that went off to China to get shipped. And all of a sudden, the, the, the ministers in the Netherlands decided to lick walls, because apparently that's what the Europeans do nowadays. They lost their damn minds, and then the entire auto industry basically came on the verge of explosion, because China decided they were not going to ship out the finished product. These, these, little, these little chips going out. All of a sudden, cars, right? $60,000 cars could not be manufactured because they didn't have a handful of 50-cent chips. Anyway, these are the kind of things to be thinking about in this modern world. Again, it's not, it's not late stage capital. Boys and girls, I don't care. You can call me Mar Look, look people, look people. I got, I got Marx's capital on my bookshelf. I, I, I am not against reading other points of view. I'm just saying, motherfucker, this ain't late stage cap. It's just, it's just not late stage capitalism. It is dumb stage capitalism. <laughs> it is dumb stage capitalism, though. And so I think this is kind of interesting. I think uh, this is coming from WCCF Tech. Uh, memory shortages are actually so terrible that Samsung is shifting high bandwidth memory, high bandwidth memory production towards DDR5 to ensure that it gets maximized profit, right? So high bandwidth memory is kind of like a different RAM solution, memory solution used uh, for, for super, super fast computing. Uh, the thing is, there's so much demand for DDR5 that they're like, well, maybe, maybe we'll do less of this and more of this. Here's the problem though. AI still needs this. AI needs this and this. And so that's why I think this is gonna be kind of curious to see as things kind of shift around. And you know, and basically how, how, how does Sam Altman destroy our society? I mean, we know Sam Altman is go going to destroy our society. The real question is, is how? How will, will it actually play out? Um, Samsung is considering a drastic shift in DRAM production lines to meet the demand for DDR uh, modules, ensuring maximum profits in the ongoing super cycle, right? They want to make the most money possible. They only have so many fabs. They only have so many factories and the rest of it. They want to make the most money possible. The memory shortage, shortages have reached an unprecedented level to the point where some of the RAM modules out there have crossed the thousand dollar barrier a thousand bucks for a ram module right and by the looks of it the supply is expected to remain constrained for several quarters ahead and when they say several quarters that basically means we're looking at 2027 constrained ram into 2027 at least basically basically until people realize the ai fraud is in fact fraud let's see let's stop even calling it a bubble to call it a bubble gives it a bit more too much respect it's just the AI fraud, right? Uh, in, in light of this, Digitime, Digitimes reports that one of the largest RAM producers, Samsung, is looking to diversify its production by allocating a larger portion of output to DDR and LPDDR modules as competition in the HBM segment has forced the Korean giant to take a hit on profitability. Meanwhile, DDR5 uh, spot prices are reaching new highs with each passing day, giving the firm an optimal opp opportunity. So basically just looking at it, what thing is going to make us the most money? Quote, the official price for a 64 gig RDIM has risen from about 265, Jesus Christ, $265 in the third quarter, which uh, still seems like a hell of a lot of money. Uh, of 2025 to $450 in the fourth, nearly a 70% jump. DDR5 is now contributing more profit to Samsung than a uh, high bandwidth memory 3E, and future quarterly price increases could push modules towards $500. So your 64 gig stick around that was already kind of sort of stupid at $265 is now $450 and it's going to go past. 500. Samsung is expected to allocate a larger portion of production lines uh, to the 1C DRAM technology, opening up more room for DDR5, LPDDR5X, LDPPR6, uh, and GDDR7 modules. More importantly, the firm now sees a massive 
75% gross margin uh, with RDIM. So that's not, that's gross, that's gross, that's, that's still fucking good gross. That's, that's good. Uh, most of the production is expected to be allocated towards the AI segment, notably for CSPs and AI giants involved in data center buildouts, which will leave the consumer market in trouble. So I think that's gonna be the other interesting thing to be thinking about with this too. So they're going away from high bandwidth memory to DDR, right? DDR is already looking at 75% gross margins. But here's one of the issues, right? We talk about supply and demand in the United States, and this is how uh, capitalism is supposed to work. Uh, but, you know. That's how it's supposed to work, and then there's a system that we have. Basically, what, what happens when you have companies that have the ability to essentially uh, print money? So we saw this during the Biden administration. Again, yes, I hate Trump. Only slightly more than I hated Biden. Anyways, right? During the Biden administration, right? They were printing money. They were printing cash. People had more cash, right? Uh, people that were making like $75,000 a year, couples making $150,000 a year, they were literally getting stimulus checks from the government. When Pelosi, the Democrat, was confronted on why people making $150,000 a year that have not lost their jobs or anything else, why they're getting stimulus checks from the government, she she literally said, COVID is hard on everybody. Which again, I don't, <laughs> both yes, <laughs> and that's a dumb answer, right? But everybody had all this cash, so what did they do? They went out there and they started buying a lot of stuff. People that did not necessarily need any extra money, had extra money, so they went out to there, buy a lot of stuff, and that's one of the things that pushed, and it pushed inflation up by like 20 some odd percent uh, during the Biden administration, where he was too dead to grasp the fucking concept. The problem that we get to, though, is again, if we, cor if we correlate that to the AI fraud that is currently going on, is look at this, right? OpenAI is now technically worth $500 billion, supposedly. Anthropic, $230 billion. XAI, well over $200 billion at this point in time. You have all of these, these companies out there, right? With, with these, ficti these fictitious uh, valuations. But with those fictitious valuations, they're getting a tremendous amount of investment money. And not just investment money, but this weird circular economic horse crap that's going on, right? NVIDIA gives $100 billion to OpenAI, so OpenAI can buy $100 billion from product from NVIDIA. Because, yeah, <laughs> that's... I don't believe Enron did that. To, to, to give Jensen Wong credit where credit is due, I'm not sure Enron did that. <laughs> Maybe they're not Enron. I also don't think they're Cisco, but anyways. So the interesting thing here, right, is if companies are already, right, they, they say we need to buy as much of this product as possible. And then they essentially have unlimited bank accounts. Unlimited, right? Sam Altman is talking about $1.4 trillion in CapEx expenses. I mean, like, what? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Like, it, what? Anyways, they have so much money. So what's going to happen when you have constrained capacity, right? No matter how much these people produce, it is going to be constrained. So not only is AI eating all this stuff up, but everybody else needs these chips too. So there's only so much that can be produced. You also have the issue that these companies know this is a fraud. Samsung completely understands that this is an AI fraud. Micron completely understands that this is an AI fraud. I'm pretty sure Jensen Wong, or nudge, nudge, wink, wink, knows this is a fucking fraud, right? So one of the big things is they don't want to massively increase capacity. Because again, it's, it's a capitalist business. If they go out and they build factories and they hire people and they do all of that kind of stuff and the economy collapses, Right? Well, they just outlaid a whole hell of a lot of money for, for a, an asset that is now worthless. So they're not that interested in actually expanding capacity because they know it's a fucking fraud. As I say, don't listen to the fucking CEOs. Fuck anything that comes out of the CEOs' mouths. Look at what they're doing. Look at where they are actually allocating resources. Don't look at what they say when they're right beside Trump. Don't look at what they pontificate on when they're at Web Summit or some other horse shit. Look at where the checks are actually being sent. And when you look, what you realize is the checks are not being sent to build fucking fabs. <laughs> For a lot of these companies because they they know this is a fraud 
And so the curious thing that's going to happen here is what happens when unlimited money chases constrained capacity? Lordy, 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 lordy. This is going to be an interesting thing. And the thing for you all to realize, again with this, good news, good news, as the ship slips into the icy cold waters, the temperature is in fact 36 degrees, not 34 degrees. So basically what's going on here is they're allocating uh, production for DDR, uh, DDR5 instead of HBM, but it's all going to AI. <laughs> Like it's 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 a cur it's a curious note to see what's going on, but at the end of the day, whether it's HBM or whether it's DDR, it's all going to AI anyway. So what do you think about this? What do you think about this level of constrained capacity? What do you think about Samsung already making 75% gross margins on DDR? And uh it's only going to go up from there. What do you think about this dumb stage capitalism where there is so much investment money being dumped into, into an area that there, there is no, there's not the proven value here by any fucking stretch of the imagination, but they're just dumping more and more money into it because I guess that's what you do in dumb stage capitalism. I don't know, put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. Do you remember I do these videos in order to support SiliconDojo.com, free hands-on technology education in Durham, North Carolina. Take a look at our schedule at SiliconDojo.com. We have a class coming up on uh, computer vision using the Moon Dream model. Uh, we have another class coming up on pushing AI to the edge using Raspberry Pis. Uh, I have this literally sitting on my desk so we can do a class doing the Jetson Nano. Uh, we have more and more classes uh, coming down the pike, so take a look at SiliconDojo.com if you're interested. If you want to support free classes, there's a donor box link down below. And with that, see y'all later.